Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and welcome to this video tutorial for the new Boston. In the last video, we looked at HTTP requests in jQuery and how it's similar. Uh, it's very similar to Ajax uh, functionality. We're essentially using our this syntax here and we're using the get HTTP request to send a file, uh, a, sorry, variables to this file and then return the data. So if you haven't watched the last video, go ahead and watch that now. In this video, we're going to be looking at the difference between get and post, and there's not really any difference. We're just going to be talking about why we would use it instead of get. And then we're going to be supplying some additional parameters to this as well, just so you can uh, see how we uh, pick them up in PHP. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change get to post. Now remember our original example returned the um, re returned the uh, reversed string that we typed in here. Now because we've changed this to post, our get variables here are no longer valid. So we're going to also need to go ahead and change them to post. Okay, so let's pull up our browser and refresh the page. I'm going to go ahead and type in my name and click go you can see that we've retrieved exactly the same result as when we used get. Now, if uh, if you have you know written code before, either in PHP or another language, you'll understand that the difference between get and post is one, the uh, security aspect, I guess, where you don't show, uh, you, you aren't able to modify the variables from the URL, and also the length of data that you can send. So let's uh, show another example. Let's uh, let's say that this text area here with the ID of string was actually a text area field. We'll create a text area and we'll break down um, the input box down there. So the ID is going to still be string, but we'll just change a few values like the rows and the columns. And now we have on our page a text area. So first of all, it would be more appropriate to use post in this case because we are allowed to uh, supply um, a lot more data in here um, owing up to the fact that post now allows us to have this data. It's still going to process this data to reverse.php and it's still going to send this string along as, an in as a variable called input. Now let's go ahead and also um, create another field. So I'm going to go uh, and break, in fact, we'll put this in a paragraph here. And we'll create another paragraph just up here with the input type of text. And we'll give this an ID of name. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview that in our browser. We've now got a field here and a field here. We're going to send both these with the um, post HTTP request in Ajax, but we're going to send the two different values. So the first thing we want to do is change or add another variable just up here, and I'm going to call that uh, name. So we're creating a variable called name. Now this is equal to, and remember we're going to use a selector, a hash, because we've called um, this input ID name. So we reference with a hash and then name and then again dot val. So now we have an additional variable called name which we're going to send along to this reverse.php as well. So I'm going to use a comma just after here and we're going to use exactly the same syntax as we did here but this time I'm going to send a variable called um, name and that's going to be equal to name. Now I'm going to go ahead and change this to string. Um, I tend to do this personally um, I call the variable um, that I'm passing to PHP the same variable that I've stored in uh, JavaScript. Now it can get quite confusing, but um, for me this is just the way I prefer to do it. As long as you remember that this is the name of the variable and this is the value of the variable, then this shouldn't con confuse you too much. So now what we're doing is we're taking the name and the string, so the name from this box here and the string from this box here, we are then storing them inside variables in JavaScript. We're sending them to reverse.php with a variable name string and the variable name name with the string value and the name value. And we're still returning this data here. 
Okay, so now we're going to go over to reverse.php and we're just going to change how this works. It's no longer going to reverse our string, but we're just going to relay both bits of information back. So additionally, we need to check that we have posted the net, uh, the string and here we need to check we've posted the name. So now we have two variables being submitted to this file. We need to check both of them have been set. We're then going to create two more variables. Name is going to equal dollar underscore post name and um, string is going to equal dollar underscore post string. Now with regards to security, if you're taking anything like this to a live server, you have to still be aware that if you're posting data without sanitizing it first, uh, you could be allowing yourself into some security problems. Um, the best thing to uh, do is if you're you know, going to uh, put these into a database or anything, use the MySQL real escape string function, um, or at least if you are posting these um, to a page, use the HTML entities function. I'm going to leave these out for now. Uh, I just thought I'd mention it just in case um, anyone had any uh, problems with this. Okay, so now that we've done this, we can go ahead and construct a sentence that we're going to output. So I'm first of all going to say name, then says, and then the string. So now we've passed both these variables and we're going to echo them out in a sentence. So we can include, of course, HTML in here. Um, I'm just going to make this um, italics and I'm going to make the name bold. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and test this on the page. So I'm going to write my name in here and I'm going to write a short sentence in here. How are you? So when we click go, uh, you see we retrieve this information back. Now you'll notice that there's a problem here and we actually have um, tags as opposed to the actual interpreted HTML. Now if we go back to our ajax.js file, you'll see that we used the text function to apply this returned data from reverse.php into our feedback div area. In actual fact, instead of using text, if you need to um, you know, pass HTML and actually have it render as HTML, you need to go ahead and use the HTML functionality. So now let's go ahead and just click go again. In actual fact, I don't think that's going to work, so we'll re refresh. I'm going to type Alex and hello, how are you? I'm going to click go, and now it says, Alex says, hello, how are you? So hopefully with this example, you can start to see the more practical applications of using the get and post HTTP requests. Almost always you're going to use the uh, post HTTP request because you need to allow for sending large amounts of data and also making sure that people don't access your PHP file. For example, PHP forward slash reverse dot PHP. They could then go ahead and modify um, the URL to input uh, fields. For example, Alex equals name and string equals hello, for example. Okay, but because we're using post data, um, this isn't possible from the URL bar. It all depends on the data you're sending. I mean, in this case, we're sending a text field, which could contain a large amount of characters. So we need to ensure that this is catered for using the post HTTP request.